Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the 11 step testing process guys. Guys, if you ask me the one of the most commonly asked question from this unit is this topic only guys. Okay. Yes. So that is the reason why please go through it once or twice and the concept is really easy guys if you understand the logic here. Okay. Yes. So let us start. So basically this is a testing process guys in simple words you can say. Okay. So the software testing process is this. This is an example you can say. Okay. Yes. So it is a V shaped process guys. The, the image which you will be drawing or the flow chart which you will be drawing will look in a V shape. So that this is it will look in this way guys. I think it cannot be shown in a single image. So that's the reason why I'm just sliding it up so that you can see right yes so it is in a shape of a v right yes okay so the software testing process example as illustrated in figure 19 that's the figure is an 11 step testing process the following v concept of testing so this is also called as a v shape testing or v concept testing okay so the v represents both the software development process and the 11 step software testing process so basically it is going to represent both of them the building as well as the testing okay so the first five steps use it to verify as a primary verification as a primary means to evaluate the correctness okay of the intermediate development delivers okay so validation is used to test the software is it executable or mode so basically what is a verification and validation guys so what is the difference so basically verification is nothing but it is just a cross checking in simple words you can say like you are checking whether you are having the particular required items or not that's it you are not going to test them whether they are working properly or not and all those things you are not going to test here so that comes under verification whereas in validation you are going to give some inputs you will be expecting some outputs you will be solving those issues and you will give some inputs and expect some outputs guys so basically here you are testing them in a clear words so that comes under validation okay yes so results of both verification and validation should be documented so any result which is coming with it's really important right so because you are spending some of your time right so that is the reason why everything will be documented both verification and validation will be used to test the inst installation of software as well as the changes of the software okay so basically whenever you are installing the software when you are changing any updates you are giving any updates every time you will follow these two steps guys verification and validation are really important you can say okay yes so even when i upload a youtube video i'll be checking whether it is uploaded properly or not because if it is not uploaded properly there will be an issue like someone will be saying that this video is missing or that video is missing so in that way initially i'll verify them like are they available in my system or not so basically if I, i'll be numbering from 1.1 1.2 1 like that right so basically did i number them properly did i miss any number so in that way i will check so after that validation is nothing but when i create a playlist i'll manually check each and every video whether they are playing properly or not is the audio clear or not everything i'll be checking so that comes under validation so in that way it will work guys right yes so if you ask me what are the 11 steps so these are the 11 steps guys Okay, the first step being access a development plan and status guys will be going through each and every step in detail. Don't worry. Okay. Yes. So access access development plan and status. Okay. Step two is a develop the test plan. Step three is a test software requirement. Step four is a test software design. Step five is a test software construction. Step six is a execute test. Step seven acceptance test. Step eight report test result. Step nine software installation step 10 test software changes step 11 evaluate the test efficient effectiveness okay yes so these are all the 11 steps guys guys please try to remember the exact names guys because if you remember them once you can draw them in the diagram as well as while explaining also you can repeat them right yes so that is the reason why try to remember them okay yes so i told you both the development process as well as the testing process will be shown in the v-shape if you remember i told you right yes so the left side uh, thing will show the development of the software guys whereas the right one will show the testing of the software so what will happen in development guys i hope everyone knows right so initially you will be collecting all the requirements okay then you will design some things okay so once the designing is done you will build the software okay so once the building is done you will install the software or you will deploy the software in original terms we call it as deployment so you will deploy the software and once the deployment is done you will maintain the software like whether it is all the functionalities are working in a proper way or not you will validate it so these are the steps you can see so you can write as many steps as you want guys so any sdlc process you can just draw it in a arrow way guys that's it right yes so testing process the same 11 steps which we discussed you can draw them one after the other and this is your v-shape 
got it yes so your question will be okay so we got some idea and we already know about this requirement gathering building software and all those things so our only questions are with respect to this testing process can you explain the testing process is your question right yes so let us go through that right now don't worry okay yes so anyway i'll be just giving you an overview about these things also so basically what is requirement gathering guys so basically when someone comes for you to do a project so what is the first question you will ask them so what is the project about what are your requirements like what you want what are the functionalities you want in your project and all those things you will take right so all this concept of taking inputs from the client is nothing but the requirement gathering so if you ask me what is the major or important step in the whole software life cycle requirement gathering one of the most important guys so assume that you took a requirement wrongly and you developed the whole project and gave him so he will simply say that i did not ask for this why did you do it right so the whole fault is due to the requirement gathering so because of that you need to restart the whole game or process from the start so requirement gathering is one of the most important after that the designing okay so once you are perfect with the software requirement gathering the next important thing will be the designs guys so in design mostly you will be drawing all the uml diagrams the class diagram activity diagram deployment diagram there are many diagrams right yes so we'll be representing them so that the software developer who is going to code the application it will be easy for him right so that is your goal there okay so once the designing and everything is done perfectly then it's go then the software will move to development stage so where the coding people will start coding and they will start testing and everything will be done here itself okay yes so once that is all done the software will be ready to deployment so deployment is nothing but installing on the client side guys so testing and everything is done assume in that way then it is ready for deployment right yes so once deployment is done obviously there will be some bugs right which are uh, exploited or which are found by the users right yes so all those things will be removed in the maintenance so these are all the steps in development of a process guys okay now let us go through testing softwares okay so in testing software the first step is nothing but access a development plan and status right yes just give me a second okay so your our first step is uh, access a development of plan and status okay so basically whenever you want to do something what is the first thing that you should do guys you should always have a plan guys so if you want to accomplish something so basically assume that you want to study some units today so just allot some time so spend 30 minutes of your time and uh, write somewhere like from this time to this time i'll study this subject this unit after that i'll study this unit like that because these are things that will make you get interested so basically your goal is to complete half at least half if you wrote five units at least half two units or three units complete guys that will be a huge satisfaction for you so in that way planning is really important okay so here this first step is nothing but planning the first step is a prerequisites to build vv and t plan okay so it is also called as vv and t plan okay so used to evaluate the implemented software solution during this step testers challenge the completeness and correctness of the development plan based on the extensive and completeness of the project plan and the tester so basically they are going to plan everything guys okay so once a proper sample plan is done so how do they want to access it how they want to do it so then they will be moving on to the next step that is nothing but develop the test plan okay okay so here at the end once they got the idea about what they are interested in doing so they can now start developing the plan right so forming the plan for testing will follow the same pattern as in software planning testing so the structure of all plans should be same but the contract so basically here again they will create a solid plan guys like in a requirement analysis i need to check these things in the design i need to check these things in the deployment i need to check these things so these are the next three steps if you ask me okay so test the software requirements so i told you right so whenever someone is building a project or a uh, or an application which is given by a client the first step to be done 100% perfectly is a software re software requirements guys so basically what are the client requirements which should be known to you perfectly because if they are incomplete or if they are not properly taken by you you will end up building something wrong and which is just a waste of your time or and your money right yes so incomplete or inaccurate or inconsistent requirements lead to most software failures the inability to get requirements right during the requirement gathering phase can also increase the cost of implementation significance so basically assume that you took a project from a client they want to they told you that to build a web application but you ended up building an android app so in that situation you need to restart the whole game right so you need to restart and you need to start building a website later on so which is really a complex thing from converting a android app to a website right yes so that is the reason why always the inputs which are taken should be 100% proper the second one is a test software design okay so basically whenever we design something 
obviously there will be some errors guys like i'm not saying in terms of in terms of coding but sometimes you will miss of some of flow you will miss some kind of important things so in that situation it is always a better choice to test it so test software design is nothing but here you will verify it guys so these steps will all will come under verification only guys because the pro product is not ready right so the only thing you can check on paper and you can check okay so this is done this is done like that that's it okay yes so software design so in software design if you are having a module like a login so in that situation someone will sign someone should get a page where he can opt for sign in or sign up right yes so if he is already having an account he will directly sign in if he is not having sign up so if he clicks to sign up again a form should open like that there will be a flows right so everything can be represented in simple flow charts or diagrams right yes so everything should be as per the requirement so you should verify them and you should get a confirmation from the client also if possible okay so the next step is nothing but the pro, pro program build phase testing so basically when you are starting building you will be doing performing various tests right yes so this mainly comes under i think so it comes under verification only i'm not sure about it but please cross check it once again guys okay yes so basically when you are building the application you will be doing some unit test integration test and many kind of testings right black box testing white box testing and all those things will be coming here okay yes so once some kind of a building phase testing small basic testings is done then you will be moving on to the execute and record results so basically you are going to execute the program or the application guys and you will give some inputs and you will get some outputs right so you will be maintaining them in some records so that whenever someone else is testing he will give some other inputs and he will check cross check whether everything is going correctly or not so based on your requirement here this comes under 100% under validation because you are interacting with the application in simple words right yes so this involves the test of the code in a dynamic state the approach method and tools specified in this plan will be to validate i told you right so validate the execution code in fact means the standard software requirements so basically it is used for validation okay okay so the next step will be acceptance test so i told i think everyone knows what is acceptance test right so here the application will be given to the end user to test so basically assume that you built an application you will be calling your brother or sister to test it so assume that he is the user okay so in that situation if he tests and if he finds some bugs and lets you know you will be resolving them so this is a concept of a testing by some other people who does not know the exact logic and who is a customer or a end user is called as acceptance testing okay yes you can go through the theory guys okay similarly the next stage is a nothing but a report test results so basically whenever you are doing any tests the most important thing is you need to document them guys or you need to write them somewhere in terms of checklists or anywhere because if you are writing them this will help the developers to understand them easily right yes so the developer will be seeing this okay so okay this is the bug i know where the exactly the bug has been started so he can identify and he will resolve it similarly he will do for multiple bugs and all those bugs will be resolved really easily right so that is the main importance of reporting them okay so the next step will be the software installation okay so once the test team has confirmed the software is ready for production the ability to execute the software in the production environment should be tested okay so assume that your software is working 100% on your systems so basically your systems are some high end systems assume in that way okay yes and my system is a low end system my system is only having 2gb ram assume in that way is an example guys okay yes so in that situation the application might run on my system or might not run on my system right so that is the reason why the software installation checks will also be done so basically you will be installing it on multiple operating systems multiple ram requirements and everywhere and you will test it whether it is functionally working or not so that comes under this step okay the test is the software installation so the next step is software changes so if there are any kind of small changes which you found in step 9 you will modify here guys okay so while this is a, shown as a step 10 in the context of performing maintenance after the software is implemented the context of application we can just go through the theory guys okay yes so if there are any kind small small modifications you will be doing them guys okay and the last step is evaluate test efficiency so basically how did you perform the whole 10 steps or 11 steps how did you perform so that thing you will be evaluating here guys so basically testing improvement can be best be achieved by evaluating the efficiency so how your team has done or how your software test assignments have done so did they help in the production phase or did they help in anywhere so this kind of things we will also be tested at the end guys okay yes so these are all the 11 steps of software testing process or plan and this is a v diagram guys okay yes so i hope everyone got some basic idea even the video is a bit lengthy like around 10 to 4 15 minutes i think it's 14 minutes now okay yes so i hope everyone got some basic idea right yes so in the next lecture we'll be going through the review of this particular unit and let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching